How many of you remember the 60s? I have to admit, it's a little hazy for me, too. But there is one particular event that stands out in my mind. To the moon, Alice! Next on One Nation. Hello, America. I'm Dr. Jake Jacobs. The actor-comedian Robin Williams used to love to quip, if you can remember the 60s, you weren't there. Well, I was there, and I do remember the 60s like it was yesterday. I remember the horrible assassination of President Kennedy in 1963. And then in early 64, February of 64, I remember how excited I was when I was watching the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. And then, of course, there was the Summer of Love, when we had, in 1967, the counterculture in San Francisco listening to the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band. And then, of course, there was the Green Bay Packers winning the amazing Ice Bowl on December 31st, 1967. And then we won the very first Super Bowl in January of 68 against the Kansas City Chiefs. And remember, the Super Bowl trophy to this day is called the Lombardi Trophy. Now, historians have called the year 1968 the year of hate, with the horrible assassinations of Martin Luther King and Robert F. Kennedy and the numerous bloody race riots throughout many of America's major cities. However, with all those horrible events, the event that poignantly sticks out in my heart and mind was on Christmas Eve, 1968. Apollo 8 was launched on December 21, 1968, and was headed to the moon. It was orbiting it without landing and then returning home to Earth. Apollo 8 accomplished many amazing feats. It was the very first time humans had ever gone beyond low Earth orbit. It was the closest to date humans had ever gotten to the moon. After opening our Christmas presents that Christmas Eve, well, you should have seen some of the gifts I got, but... I digress. After opening the Christmas presents that night, my dad was all excited and he had us sitting around our TV so we could see, thanks to satellite technology, the very first time in human history live film footage from the far side of the moon or the dark side of the moon. Don't worry, I'm not going to play any Pink Floyd right now. Eventually, we would see Earth as a whole planet and Earth rise in pictures, but the most awe-inspiring was when Apollo 8 crew as they were orbiting the moon, did a live broadcast then to the largest TV audience in history, showing us the far side of the moon while wonderfully reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. On that magical Christmas Eve of 1968, our astronauts were wonderfully articulating what I call American cosmology of creation. Our republic under God, understanding that the very source of our life and our liberty and our humanity and our universe is the God of the scriptures, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, in contrast to our biblical American cosmology was the cosmology of the communist cosmonaut, as it was told by Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev. Khrushchev's atheism had him arrogantly announcing in 1961 that when the cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin was in space, he quipped, I see no God up here. Now, I think it was poetic justice that the evil empire, the Soviet Union, an empire of atheism, gulags, and the death of millions and millions of people behind the Iron Curtain of oppression died on Christmas Day, 1991. While well, atheism and persecution of Jews and Christians was official state policy in the Soviet Union, there are unfortunately entities in our very own country of America that would like to see the same thing in our wonderful republic. Due to Apollo 8's Genesis reading in 1968, NASA was being sued by the notorious apostle of atheism, Madeleine Murray O'Hare, in 1969. 
In fear of her lawsuit, NASA requested a radio blackout when Apollo's 11, excuse me, Apollo 11, second man on the moon, Buzz Aldrin, read from the book uh, from the Bible's book of John, chapter 15, verse 5, quote, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me will bring forth much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing, end quote. Aldrin then participated in the Christian ritual of communion. Now, I want you to think of that. The very first liquid in food eaten on the moon was an expression of American Christian cosmology. The symbolic elements of the very body and blood of Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, creator of the universe, redeemer of the world. I guess you could say Buzz Aldrin took communion. All right, all right. That was a bad joke. I, I, I shouldn't become a comedian. My family would starve. But on a serious note, in the Holy Scriptures, Psalm 19.1 says that the heavens declare the glory of God. So on this Christmas Day, as we celebrate the wonderful birth of Jesus, the world's Savior, the God of our Republic, may we join the angels singing, glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, goodwill towards men. As we celebrate Christmas Day, let us now more than ever dedicate ourselves to our family and our loved ones. This is Jake Jacobs. May God bless you, and may you bless those you love. And until next week, always remember, the truth will set you free. If you thought that was cool, check out more videos on freedomproject.com. You'll enjoy them.